Table of Contents Forward Chapter 1, Signs of Homesickness Chapter 2, A Routine Chapter 3, Be Open to New Things Chapter 4, Take Care of Yourself Chapter 5, Have Truthful Expectations Wrapping Up. Forward feeling homesick is an absolutely normal experience. When you're away from home, life is full of unexpected experiences and hardships. You might be living away from home for the first time, feel anxious about meeting new individuals, or be worrying about finding a line of work. When you're in a new place and feeling a little anxious, panic may quickly kick in. How do you stop that rising tide of desperation? Missing home ways to cope with homesickness no matter where you are. Chapter 1, Signs of Homesickness Synopsis So here you are. You've been looking forward to moving, to new freedom and responsibilities, to new individuals. And all of a sudden you're feeling sad and nervous. This isn't how you planned it. Admitting it may be hard when other people seem to be so happy and together, but you're feeling homesick. How feeble. You're not alone. A few of the smiling people you see are actually feeling homesick, also. What it is almost everyone feels homesick at some time. Grown-ups encounter it when they move to new places or jobs. Homesickness is among the most common adjustment issues experienced by new students too. They're frequently surprised to discover how intensely they miss home, and they struggle to manage with the resulting emotions. These emotions are induced by two basic experiences, losing what is familiar, comfortable, and predictable, example individuals, places, functions, things, adjusting to a fresh environment, with its own individuals, places, functions, and things, even when we have selected to move to a new place, we might feel homesick. We have to still adjust to fresh surroundings, so we might grieve the loss of the familiar, feel insecure without our usual sources of support, and find it hard to function as usual. Basically, while we have physically left home, it might take more time to adapt emotionally. Humans by nature tend to resist change and fight to hold on to familiar surroundings. A few think that homesickness is chiefly about adapting to new relationships. One person depicts it this way, suddenly, you discover that rather than being a central individual in a small unit with plenty of peripheral activities and acquaintances, you've become an anonymous member of a 4,000-plus community where you don't know anybody. You feel shaken and lonesome, and you long for the secure and the familiar. Occasionally these emotions are totally overwhelming. Tasks that would commonly have been easy may suddenly seem quite a challenge, or even feel impossible without your common framework of support. It's crucial to realize that homesickness is a normal process. It's a time of change and a natural response to loss and adjustment. It doesn't in any event mean that we're inadequate or immature. As a matter of fact, it may be viewed as a positive emotion, as it suggests that we're connected to a familiar and comforting place, to acquaintances, and to loved ones. Feeling homesick might include, feeling sad, lonesome, insecure, or as if we don't belong crying feeling remarkably anxious or upset about matters being unable to get into a comfy routine often thinking of individuals at home wanting to leave and return home feeling broadly depressed and slash or anxious minor physical ailments. Chapter 2, A Routine Synopsis Among the best things you are able to do is to find something familiar. Maybe it's a sport you used to play at home, or a pet food you used to eat. Doing something that was familiar in your home area is an excellent way to make new acquaintances in a new place, invite the individuals you work with to a pub, or back to your place for American-style hot dogs. Or to make new acquaintances join a sports club in your local area. Not only will this give you weekly human contact, it'll likewise provide you with the start of a routine, crucial in beating homesickness long term. Establishing familiar break of day and evening routines may produce some sense of sanity and calm in your life. These are two habits that you are able to start today that will make a big improvement in your day. Now, because of different things that have come up in my life, I've settled a little out of my routines. I've likewise been changing them over the last few weeks as my needs have shifted. I've simplified my break of day routine, to give myself more of a feel of calm. 
Here's my new morning routine but you are able to adapt it to what fits you, break of day routine 4 o'clock workout slash shower 445 coffee slash study slash breakfast 515 right 6 o'clock make lunch to take with me for the day in the evenings, I want to get ready for the following day, log in my progress, and do a one sentence journal reflecting on my day prior to winding down for retiring. Evening routine get items assembled to make lunch. Organize clothes clean up clean out email slash journal shower red launching routines it may sound easy to establish routines like the ones listed above, but it's even as easy to fall out of them. You need to make them a habit that will stick. The key steps to instituting routines are to, one center on them. Keep your routines as your front most goals for one month, centering on nothing else. Having too many habits at once spreads your focus too thin, and makes success more improbable. To make them reinforcing. I've written about instituting a calming routine, and that's what I'm doing with these two routines. In the morning, I have running, coffee, reading, writing, and showering as part of my quieting routine. In the evening, I quietly prepare for the following day, review my day, shower and read. They're both very pleasing routines. 3. Log your progress. Describing your progress daily is a great way to log progress, and you may do it in a journal or some other sort of log, or put up stars on a calendar. The key is to keep track of it and see how well you've done over the journey of a month. Chapter 3. Be open to new things Synopsis The more open you are to new things, the less you might miss past things. Be open to exploring fresh situations, opportunities, individuals, classes, and choices. Try to prevent comparing your new environment to home they're dissimilar. It may be scary to face so many new things, but they'll provide opportunities to meet new acquaintances. Try something different studies indicate we fear an unknown outcome more than we do a recognized bad one. What if I don't like this new dish? What if that foreign land is dangerous? I've an exceedingly active and fertile imagination, and although it's an excellent advantage in writing, it may sometimes be a disadvantage in living. Attempting something new frequently calls for bravery. And needing to summon bravery is itself a benefit. Once it's discharged it will, like its second cousin once removed, anger, haphazardly engulf everything in its path. How fantastic to open a flood of bravery and be carried on its waves to goals of unforeseen advantage. Attempting something new opens up the possibility for you to savor something new. Entire vocations, entire life paths, are carved out by individuals dipping their toes into little ponds and suddenly finding a love for something they had no clue would capture their imaginations. Attempting something new keeps you from getting bored. Even I, the most routine loving individual I know, become bored if I'm not continually challenged in some manner. And it's not the fresh challenges I'm eager to take on that represent my biggest opportunities for growth it's the ones I'm not. Attempting something new forces you to grow. We don't ever grow from taking action we've forever taken. Growth appears to require we take new action first, whether it's adopting a fresh attitude or a fresh way of thinking or literally adopting new action. Thrusting yourself into new states of affairs and leaving yourself there alone, as it were, frequently forces good change. A spirit of constant self-challenge keeps you humble and open to fresh ideas that very well might be better than the ones you currently care for. Talk to person while waiting in line and ask what they do. You don't have to wait for a specified event to network. Make an attempt to connect with individuals you pass smile and make eye contact for a bit longer than usual. Being even somewhat more open can open up your world. Learn a new skill. Begin taking piano lessons or karate courses. Say yes to something you forever talk yourself out of, sing karaoke or take a kickboxing class, even you're afraid of you'll feel humiliated. Take a walking lunch. Walk about your neighborhood for a half hour, with no goal in mind, and then eat at your desk when you return. You never know what will occur when you get out without a plan. Offer to help somebody else. Occasionally it's the best way to help yourself, and not just for the warm fuzzy feeling it supplies. You never know what you'll learn through the process.
carpool to work. This provides you a chance to get to know colleagues better, great for socialization, and possibly great for your career. Compliment a stranger on something you observe. Everybody likes to be valued, and it's an excellent way to start a conversation. Take pictures of things you find intriguing that others may not notice. When you're attempting to frame the smiley face of leftover food on your plate, individuals will naturally want to ask what you're doing. Do something you like alone. Go to a museum, or read a book in the park. You're more approachable when you're not engulfed in a crowd, making it easier for new individuals to approach you. Bring enough lunch to share with others at work, particularly childhood favorites. Nothing bonds like shared nostalgia. Pay attention to others' body language and expressions so you are able to offer assistance when they appear to need it. Help somebody else get out of their comfort zone. You just might set the precedent that you challenge one another in your friendship. Chapter 4, Take Care of Yourself Synopsis Get Adequate Food, Sleep, and Exercise These are crucial for both physical and emotional well-being. Do things that you like. Attempt to establish a routine as soon as possible. Develop a balance between work and leisure. Be good to yourself Have you found that when you don't practice proper self-care when you don't take care of your own physical and emotional needs you are less able to take care of other people, and your power to handle stress is compromised. You're not alone Many individuals find that when they haven't had adequate sleep, when their diet is lacking, or when they don't get regular physical activity, time with acquaintances, or time alone, they feel more frayed. They discover that little things bother them more. Their reserves get low. But, making a concerted effort to take care of your own needs, and to preserve healthy habits to keep your reserves up, may help you to feel more in control of your life, and be more proactive when you deal with stress. You might feel more energized, so you are able to take more steps to develop positive change in your life. You might feel more optimistic, so you see more opportunities and fewer roadblocks. You might feel happier as you face whatever comes. You can't always command the conditions that life throws your way, but you may command how well you take care of yourself. And practicing this sort of self-care may help you to feel more empowered so you may see stressors as a challenge instead of a threat, and tackle them as such. Taking suitable care of your body, soul, and mind may keep you in optimum shape for addressing stress. The following are a few crucial basic mental and physical self-care techniques that may keep you functioning well and ready for life's challenges. Research demonstrates that healthy and supportive relationships may reduce stress and better your overall health and sense of well-being. But, all relationships are not equally supportive. Constructing a network of supportive friends, or even just one supportive relationship, may be vital to your welfare. Here are a few key skills that may help you to build relationships with individuals that are truly supportive and sustaining. Meeting individuals The more individuals you have in your life, the more likely you are to have really supportive relationships with at least one of them. It's good to be able to regularly add new individuals to your circle. Here are a few good ways to meet individuals, and some tips to remember when making a new acquaintance. It's crucial to make time to nurture relationships, and to go out and have fun with acquaintances. You might feel like you just don't have time to spend on this, but time management and organization strategies may help you find more time in your life to spend on friendships. These strategies may likewise help you to show up on time, recollect birthdays and other significant events, help friends when they're in need, and accomplish other things that will beef up friendships and make them supportive. Individuals often think of assertiveness as sticking up for yourself and not letting individuals push you around basically the alternative to passivity. While this is largely true, assertiveness is likewise the alternative to aggressiveness, a way of handling individuals where you get your needs met at the expense of others' needs. Acquiring the skill of assertiveness may really help you strengthen your relationships, making them reciprocally supportive, lasting, and opening the lines of communication. When we've had a difficult day, occasionally being able to talk to a friend about our feelings is all it takes to turn things around and make tension a feeling of connection and well-being. 
being really listened to and understood may have profound effects on us. While dealing with friends, it's crucial to give as well as get this supportive type of listening when support is really required. Here are a few things to remember when acquaintances are discussing things that stress or upset them, inquire about their feelings, and listen. Contemplate what you hear, so they know you truly understand. Rather than always attempting to tie the conversation back to your experiences, center questions on them and their feelings. When they're speaking, are you missing some of what they say as you're waiting for them to stop talking so you may say what you wish to say next? Stop, and truly listen to them. Some individuals give off favorable energy that makes us feel great, and other people give off damaging energy that drains us. If you pay attention to the signals that your intuition sends you and act on those signals, you'll have a healthier social circle. Here are a few questions to ask yourself, does the conversation flow well, or is it forced? Do you feel they really understand, accept, and support you? Do you feel you really understand, accept, and support them? Do you feel better or sorrier about yourself when you're with them? Do you leave them feeling stimulated or mildly depressed? Do you include them in your life for favorable qualities they have, or just to have more individuals in your life? The answers to these questions and what you may learn from this quiz will help you start to develop your intuition, which will help you fortify your relationships, or help you with. Not everybody is a suitable match. If there's somebody in your life who makes you feel foul about yourself, doesn't share any of your interests or values, or is somebody that you just don't mesh well with, it's absolutely acceptable to put that relationship on the back burner, let it fade entirely, or not develop it in the first place. Even if you were at one time close, individuals change and grow in different directions. That doesn't mean there's something amiss with either of you. But if somebody in your life is no longer right for you, it's absolutely acceptable to let them go. Conversely, if you'd like to keep them in your life out of allegiance, albeit in a periphery role, that's alright, too. But, it would be beneficial to remember not to count on them for support, if they're not able to provide it to you. Only you understand if the relationship is worth keeping or not. But it's crucial to have several individuals you may count on for support in your life. It takes some work, but cultivating a circle of really supportive friendships may make a big difference in how you handle stress and life. Chapter 5, Have Truthful Expectations Synopsis Try not to expect yourself to be absolutely adjusted, organized, popular, or dressed. Realize that you're learning, and have a sense of humor about your challenges and errors. While life's unpredictability may make it exciting and full of possibility, it may also herald deep disappointments. How do you keep your expectations aligned with reality? Some tips obviously, a particular level of expectations is good. People who have low self-expectations tend to do so because they don't feel they can do better. This is frequently a sign of depression and low self-regard. While people with lofty expectations are often happier, at some point expectations may become too high. When thinking about expectations, the crucial thing to keep in mind is whether or not they're realistic. If you constantly set goals or expectations that are impossible to accomplish, then you'll simply be setting yourself up for failure. Doing this on a regular basis is bound to have a damaging effect on your ego and self-worth. Over time, these failures may compound, leading to excess stress and other symptoms. The key to discovering the correct balance of high expectations is to challenge yourself without overextending. For instance, if you are a student that continually gets C grades, aiming for all A's next semester might be biting off more than you are able to chew. Rather, it may be more manageable to challenge yourself to get all B's. Once you succeed in meeting these expectations, you'll likely be better prepared to earn A's in the future. Setting accomplishable expectations isn't only a great way to meet your goals, but a solid way to build self-assurance. With each little success, you prove to yourself that you are able to and do deserve more. Such a slow and steady plan for action is an excellent tool for overcoming depression, stress, and anxiety disorders. 
Just as your expectations about yourself may be harmful, so too can high expectations about other people. If you constantly hold other people to an unattainable level of high expectations, you'll constantly feel like individuals are letting you down. This might lead you to believe that other people don't care about you or that you don't deserve the attention of friends and loved ones. As you begin to apply manageable expectations to yourself, it will likewise be beneficial to do so to other people. Wrapping up overcoming homesickness is a gradual process for most individuals. Recognize that adapting to a new state of affairs is hard and takes time. Let yourself ease into it, and you will eventually feel like you're home. However, if your homesickness persists and interferes with your performance, relationships, or general functioning and welfare, consider talking with someone.